Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I want to talk to you guys about a subject that might be a little sensitive, especially if you manufacture medical equipment. We're going to talk about planned obsolescence. All right. So I've got a few examples here of planned obsolescence and it can mean a lot of different things. It, it's basically the life cycle of a device, the manufacturer is gonna decide exactly when you are gonna stop using that device. And they do so by many ways. One of the ways is through consumables. There's things that they embed into consumables and that way there, nobody else can manufacture that consumable. It allows them the corner of the market and limit who provides products for their device. They also do things like uh, accessories. There's certain accessories that they will quit making, and when you quit making those accessories, the device is no longer valid. There's other things that they do, um, like they construct their equipment in a very specific manner, and that way there, nobody else can service it, so when they decide that they're no longer gonna support it, they're no longer gonna service that item, guess what? That's it, that's the end of it. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the examples I have here and we'll go over each and every one of them, all right? So first off, you guys have seen that I have an object right here from another video. This is a smoke absorber canister from a Skytron AirSafe. So what makes this guy a proprietary item is this guy right here. We have an RFID badge stuck right to the side of it the manufacturer says that that is so that they can count the amount of hours that this item has been in use and at the end of that cycle it will basically tell the uh, the smoke absorber that it's no longer a filter that's good and it won't even boot up it won't even start we've actually had issues with these RFID badges if it gets damaged in any way the machine can't read it it will red light an error code and you have to go ahead and dispose of this object it's a proprietary filter, which there's no reason why it should be. It's just a charcoal filter with some flaps, all right? There's nothing too specific about this item, but it's proprietary. They're the only ones that can make it. Although this right here can be duplicated, it's gonna be kind of difficult and kind of expensive to do that, so nobody has done it that I know of so far. So that's our first item. Second item we're gonna take a look at. This is Edwards Life Sciences. This is to one of their hemodynamics monitors. And this is a proprietary cable. You can only get this item from Edwards and it is rather expensive. I think one estimate that I had was between five and $7,000 for this cable. There is not too much technology in this cable. It does have an IR sensor down in there and a couple other things, but it's proprietary because it handles a very specific consumable set. You can see the sensors down in there. And when they decide to no longer support these as they break, and a lot of them do, that device is null and void. It's gone. The next item I'm gonna talk about, this little sensor right here. This guy actually comes from a ligature machine, and I wish I wish I could find the other part of it. What did I do with it? This is a component to a, a ligature machine. And this, this device right here, it's, uh, the older ones don't have another identifier inside them, but the newer ones have an RFID chip inside it. And that tells the item what age it, this component is, if it's been used in the device before, and also, if it's supported by the software revision so that they can modify any of those things and make that device no longer supported based on the consumables. This is just the plug end, just to demonstrate what's inside it. You can see here, it's just a regular cord breakout. There's no fancy microchips in there or anything, but on the other side of this, which I had floating around here, I don't know what I did. Of course, that's just like me to lose something, right? Ah. Anyway, that is a connector to a ligature machine. Now, according to what I was told by the representatives that used to sell that, 
the older force triad units did not have the ability to detect inf um, the the, uh, the R RFID chips. But anyway, the new units all have RFID. That way there they can keep a tighter uh, control on the consumables. So, the next item we're gonna talk about. As you guys know, if you've been watching my videos, power supplies are the number one weak link to most medical devices. They're the weak link to every device. And here's the thing about medical power supplies. Yes, they do have some components like uh, redundant caps and filters that make them medical grade. But what the manufacturers do is they make it so that they do agreements with the manufacturers of these power supplies so that they can only sell that model or that configuration to that manufacturer and they do that through contracts. Now they'll do certain things like part of the pin out will have activation pins so that you know the power button on the front of the device will activate the power supply and tell it to turn on. The, they actually do quite a few different things and the model number might be off by one digit. It might be a dash M or something at the end of the power supply model and that is gonna be proprietary. When that guy goes out, that whole line of devices, if, remember, if one of them fails, more of them will start to fail. So that whole line of items in your inventory are eventually going to just start failing more rapidly and you can't get the power supplies. It's proprietary, planned obsolescence. They plan that this device is eventually gonna fail. It's no longer gonna be supported because they have a contract with the manufacturer and nobody else can manufacture this item specifically to that spec. That device is null and void, planned obsolescence. Here. I have a bulb. You guys have probably seen this from some of my videos. This is a Carl Stortz Pentero bulb. Now, Pentero microscopes are very large. They're very expensive. Neuro microscopes, ENT microscopes, etc. But this bulb keeps track of its hours based on this little chip right here. See that little chip, that tiny little chip on that card? That's how it keeps track of its hours. And to the, this date, I think I'm the only person outside of Carl Zeiss that knows how to reprogram these, you can see my video on that, it's in the history. But when they decide to no longer sell these bulbs, all of those Pentero microscopes are null and void. Even though they use them around the globe and not every single place can get parts to and from uh, Carl Zeiss, that's all it takes. You can't reprogram the bulbs. End of life for that microscope, planned obsolescence. Now, the last item I wanna to talk to you guys about is a hemodynamics monitor here. This item here has got a different form of planned obsolescence. This monitor right here can only be opened up and serviced by the manufacturer. Now, if you see, the metal case that surrounds it comes down to the front plane of the monitor and all the fasteners are facing the other direction. So you cannot pull this cage off and you cannot separate these boards. Edwards Life Sciences, you dirty guys. I'm gonna call you out right now. This is another form of planned obsolescence. This monitor, this is a, what is it, Vigilance 2? Yeah, Vigilance 2. No longer supported by the manufacturer as far as I know. And this item here, only they can open it up. Even though this has a what I think is a minor issue with the display board. The reason I cannot open this guy up is because right down here, you'll see that there is a metal plate. You can barely see it. And see those fasteners right there? They're coming this way. And it's coming this way because it's behind the sticker. And this is one of those stickers that as you start peeling it off, it separates and it forms a, a clear bubble in between the layers. You cannot get this sticker other than from Edwards, and Edwards will not give it to you. They have to do in-house servicing. So that is their way of making sure that you cannot open up this device. And they took extra precautions to make sure that you cannot open this device, and it's actually kind of scandalous. Because these studs, it's too easy to do a standoff and a, and a threaded fastener from this side. Instead, they chose to make it all front accessible 
So you have to pull this front bezel off in order for you to open this monitor. And that's their scandal, Edwards Life Sciences. They make it so that only they can open it because you have to pull the sticker off to get to these fasteners. And that's gonna be impossible without destroying that sticker permanently. So anyway guys, that's a quick video for you guys on planned obsolescence in a variety of different ways that manufacturers do it. They're gonna do it either from service standpoint, they're gonna do it from a consumable standpoint, or they're gonna do it from a software standpoint. And some devices require software upgrades and stuff like that, and they're just not gonna support it anymore, like Microsoft, planned obsolescence. So there you go. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. I'm gonna go for a walk right now and enjoy this beautiful Houston sunshine. Have a good day, guys.